Good morning and welcome to the webinar. Today we have two experts discussing securing external collaboration and in particular we're going to cover how the IBM, ECM, and Seclor rights management solutions come together to protect your information wherever it goes. My name is Lynn Quartz, I'm the VP of Marketing at Seclor and I'm going to be your host today. Just a quick note, we are not going to be responding to questions live. But if you have a question, just enter it into the chat window and we will follow up with you after the, web, the webcast via email. So let's get started. First, I'm going to introduce our speakers. We have Ian Story, who is a program director in enterprise content management at IBM. In this role, Ian works on overall ECM strategies and evangelism. Previously, Ian was a senior product manager assigned to Content Navigator IBM ECM integration with both IBM Connections and Microsoft SharePoint, and initiatives around mobile and cloud. His background includes over a dozen years as an ECM customer as well. And uh, before joining IBM, he was with large Fortune 500 organizations such as J.P. Morgan Chase, Washington Mutual Bank, and Weyerhaeuser. So he's definitely walked in your shoes. Our next speaker is John Grillos. John is the VP of Business Development at Seclor, where he's responsible for developing strategic partnerships and OEM relationships. John has more than 25 years of executive software experience and deep expertise in strategic partnerships that interlock enterprise content management with document security. Other key areas of expertise include defining content models, business process engineering, and legal compliance. Prior to joining Seclor, John held executive positions in product management, business development, and product strategy at IBM, EMC Documentum, Workshare, and most recently at Quark. So with those intros complete, I'm going to pass it over to you, Ian. Fantastic. All right, so let's uh, go on to the charts here. So. As you heard in the introduction, I'm Ian Story. I'm a program director in our content management business here at IBM. Um, been here for a few years now, but prior to joining, I was a customer for a long time. So I'm going to take you through a quick overview, just a few minutes, on IBM Content Navigator, um, as we call it, the experience platform for your enterprise content. Um, what it is, how it works, um, what the main features are, and then how we integrate with partners like our friends at Seclor. So next chart, please, John. So from an overview perspective, IBM Content Navigator, we call it this thing called the experience platform because it's both a great out-of-the-box user interface and also a framework to build great applications. So it's both a user experience and a platform to deliver applications. So from a user experience perspective, um, it is a modern HTML5 client built with all the latest web technologies, kind of the language of the internet, HTML5, JavaScript, cascading style sheets, um, that works with all of the IBM repositories, whether that's Content Foundation, FileNet P8, IBM CM8, IBM Content Manager On Demand, even FileNet Image Services, all supported with the IBM Content Navigator out-of-the-box UI. Um, we don't just support the IBM repositories, we also support third parties through CMIS, so that might be SharePoint or Alfresco or Documentum or OpenText or what have you. And we also can integrate with uh, third party sources of data beyond content. So we've realized over the years that content doesn't just live by itself, you need access to your um, SAP system to look up information or your Siebel system or a database in SQL or Oracle or DB2 and to be able to pull that information in. We do that through a technology called external data services. And we also provide enterprise search with this navigator um, using our content analytics platform. Um, we provide the search features that allow you to do um, kind of that analytics-based search against the IBM repositories. And there's also connectors that you can license separately that will even pull in content from things like file shares and websites and so forth. So really with Navigator, it provides one single interface to work with all your enterprise content, wherever it may be. Now, beyond that, Navigator out of the box um, works on mobile devices. Uh, we have integration with Microsoft Office right out of the box, so you can be in Word or Excel or PowerPoint or Outlook and work with your content, search for your content, add new content, et cetera. 
we have integration, as mentioned, kind of in the introduction um, with both SharePoint and IBM Connections right out of the box. And most recently, we've added file sync and share capabilities to Content Navigator, so you don't need to go out and get a kind of consumer level tool to do file sync and share. You can um, sync documents with your desktop, your mobile device, and of course the repository itself, right, using the Content Navigator entitlement, which we include with the IBM ECM system, um, not something additional that you have to buy. Again, unlike some of our competitors who charge you extra for UI, we don't do that. Beyond that being a great UI um, and providing all this access through different systems, mobile devices, websites, et cetera, um, we also provide the Navigator Framework, which is a toolkit that you can use to build custom applications using a bunch of reusable visual components, um, almost like just dragging and dropping to um, assemble the UI, a little more than that from a developer's perspective, but very easy to customize the UI, extend the out-of-the-box interface, um, add your own components, um, customize it, you know, integrate it again into third-party portals and other applications and so forth. And maybe the last piece here on the framework is the framework is built with a consistent design, so it works across not only other IBM ECM products, as we'll talk about here in a moment, but also other IBM products. So if you're using Cognos or Connections or something like that, the design and the look and feel all kind of fits together. Next slide, John. So as I mentioned, um, we've got the entire portfolio of ECM products moved over to the Navigator platform. So whether you're doing case management or records management, classification, it's of course the out-of-the-box experience for all of our repositories like we talked about earlier. If you're doing data cap capture, even doing content collection through SAP, um, Navigator is the out-of-the-box experience for doing that. And that means that your applications all work together and even if you're using the cloud, our cloud offering, IBM Navigator, uses that same Content Navigator um, UI platform or experience platform, as we call it. But it's not just IBM uh, ECM that uses it. Um, the Watson team is using this for Watson Explorer Advanced and Watson Curator. We have other parts of IBM that use it, so Infosphere, Counter Fraud, Patient Care and Insights, and so forth, all using the uh, Content Navigator experience platform. And dozens and dozens of IBM business partners, as we'll talk about here in a couple slides, including, of course, Seclor, um, that have integrated with Navigator as well. So next slide, please. So whenever we talk about IBM Content Navigator, people always ask, hey, what have you done for us lately? So our most recent release came out in September of 2014, just a few months ago. Um, we added bidirectional file synchronization. Um, like we talked about earlier, this allows you to sync documents on your mobile device, on iOS or Android, on your laptop, your desktop, with the IBM repository behind the scenes. We've also bundled IBM Docs, so we include a thousand seats, or up to a thousand seats of IBM Docs with your ECM entitlement that allows you to edit and work with documents directly in your web browser. We've got entry templates that make it easier to add and work with your content. We've added file tracking capabilities. We've added um, a whole ton of things, you know, theming capabilities without having to write a bunch of code, a bunch of new social features. You can see in the screenshot here on the chart that we've added an HTML5 based viewer now with Deja, so you don't have to have a Java applet anymore. We added new web parts for Microsoft SharePoint, added support for image services, all kinds of things. So the point for everyone to understand is we continue to invest in the Navigator platform. Next chart, please. So from a partnership perspective, of course, Seclor, first and foremost, um, great partner, have completely integrated their rights management capabilities with Navigator. Um, this is just a small subset of the partners that have done this integration work with the Navigator platform, whether it's you know, folks like MS Technology and Snowbound that have integrated their viewers, or Kaltura, who's built their enterprise video platform out, or Endchoice and Genus, who have built whole solutions around Navigator tons and tons and tons of use in our partner ecosystem. And as you'll see on the next chart, go ahead and switch, John. Um, we'll talk the rest of this webinar about what Seclor has done. So from the Seclor perspective, before I transition this over to John, um, you know, what I'll note is it's a deep integration with the IBM ECM platform. And the reason it matters is 
you know, of course, while the documents live in the IBM ECM system, they're secure, they're encrypted at rest and in transit, and they're tied to your directory provider and so forth. But, you know, oftentimes you need to share content outside of the ECM system. Maybe you're sending a document that's attached to an email. Maybe you're putting it on a thumb drive or um, doing some kind of collaboration with the document, posting it in a SharePoint system or something like that. And once the content leaves the IBM ECM system, you need to have it secured as well. So from that perspective, that's really where Seclor comes to the table. So they've got this great tight integration with Navigator that allows you to secure your content um, and add additional levels of security to it so that when it leaves the IBM ECM system, again, via an email or on a thumb drive or what have you, that document is still secured and it's completely integrated and seamless from an end user perspective. So from that point, I'm going to turn it over to John, and I'll be happy to uh, stick around and we'll help answer questions and so forth. As was mentioned in the intro, um, submit your questions via the chat feature, and we will follow up with folks via email. So thank you very much. Great. Thanks, Ian, uh, for that segue. That was. Uh, that was uh, extremely poignant. Uh, so how can your company ensure that the content is safe as you externalize it outside the IBM ECM system? Well, the answer for us here is with Seclore. So <clears throat> Seclore is kind of what we like to refer to as a next generation rights management software provider and we secure content for external collaboration. That's our value proposition. Um, we're strategic partners with IBM Enterprise Content Management and uh, we automatically secure the content when the content is downloaded from the IBM ECM system. So we extend the security of the IBM system outside the system itself. Um, we see four fundamental tenets that are driving rights management today. First, as content professionals, we, we know this. We know this story, right? We know that the unstructured information within and outside of the enterprises is, is experiencing kind of this hyper growth cycle. It's growing exponentially, right? Every year enterprises create, I think I've heard, one third of all unstructured information ever created. Thus, uh, it follows suit that as all this unstructured information increases, as this type at this type of pace, so too does uh, the confidential and the sensitive content that resides within inside this unstructured information. That also is increasing as well. So that's, that's kind of the first tenet. The second is um, the number and variety of methods for collaboration has increased and will continue to increase. So if you look at this illustration, back in the 90s there are a few methods of sharing sensitive information, right? You could copy a file onto a floppy disk and send it via mail, snail mail, um, or you can walk that disk down the street and hand it over to your vendor. Now, fast forward to today. So the methods of sharing are, are more vast and easier to connect with from, uh, you know, sharing files on, um, you know, different file sync and share solutions to mobile devices that, that uh, your virtual employees are using. And tomorrow, who, who knows, we could be sharing you know, this type of sensitive information on WhatsApp or Snapchat. Um, third, sharing this information externally in many cases is um, an enabler to innovation. Whether it's uh, the process that uh, guides product design or how products are packaged or the exchange of legal contracts, M&A activities, or increased use of external partners for new market penetration, you know, things of those nature. Whatever the, whatever the reason, sharing this information needs to happen outside your far, four walls. So thus the, the confidential content contained within this information sharing has increased as well. So this creates a higher risk. Right? So as you're externalizing it, the more risk associated with, uh, with that sensitive information. And fourth, the fourth driver, we know this as well as um, content professionals, is security and pri privacy regulations are becoming tighter and stricter for enterprises. Things like ITAR and EAR, SOX, HIPAA, right? all the, the acronyms associated with uh, regulatory compliance. 
you know, these are just examples of, of kind of this privacy regulation with, you know, significant fines for non-compliance. So we all have examples of, of regulatory pressure on our companies are under, and, and we know that the governance and the rules set forth by the compliance officers will be highly enforced. Audit trails are the key driver to compliance rules. So one thing is for sure, that, um, that there are more regulations to come. We know that for, for certain. So let's look at then what does Seclure do, right? Seclure simply secures firewalls wherever they go. So the solution um, that Seclure brings to the market is called File Secure, right? So File Secure by Secure. And File Secure adds dynamic, ongoing control and protection to your unstructured information. So securing that confidential information and sensitive data that, that I talked about, um, both inside and outside your organizational boundaries. Independent of network, device, you know, application or data type. So File Secure seamlessly and transparently protects, controls, and monitors um, the files that are shared with external parties like you know, lawyers, auditors, business partners, contractors, and more. Really, and, and during that process, none of that confidentiality within that information is compromised, right? So cyber criminals are increasingly gaining access to highly confidential information. So what File Secure does is embeds um, the policies of that organization into the data itself, ensuring that the data stays protected no matter where it travels. So organizations can define, you know, the permissions on any file, and File Secure provides secure folder protection as well as file encryption and digital rights management protection. So in the in the file secure world and in, in our secure world, um, we provide what we like to call persistent file level security, which renders the content itself security aware. So it's smart data security. Right? By securing the information itself, uh, there's no need to worry about intrusion, hacks, you know, lost data, files, etc. If, if the data itself is secure, you're ensured that it is protected wherever it goes. So what's, what's our approach to this? Um, well, we secure files by providing responses to four specific queries. Um, the who, the what, the when, and the where. Once these queries are answered, only then um, does this, this file secure solution wrap the security around the content and the content becomes security aware. Security aware through what we like to call a policy framework and I'll talk a little bit more about that and that can be enforced um, both inside and outside the organization. And so with that the organization can now monitor and track file usage no matter where the file goes or travels and interaction with the file is completely transparent to the users. So employees or collaborators basically work as usual in their application of choice without any disruption. So let's, um, let's get in, into a bit more detail with regard to the, the who, the what, the when, and the where. So the who, or identity awareness. So who is the person receiving the document? As a document owner, you need to make sure that the person that's receiving the document or is designated to receive the document is that person specifically, right? So you have to ensure that the, that the document you're sending goes to the right person. In addition, you need measures in place that validate uh, the person you sent the file to is actually the person you designated, right? So subsequently, the person who receives the document must be authenticated um, uh, for, the, for the right to interact with, with the actual document itself. So this is true for both internal and external employees as well. So on authentication in our, in our world comes um, in, in a few flavors. So for internal users, File Secure integrates seamlessly with, uh, with your AD, right, your Active Directory or any other IAM or, or SSO tool. Um, but for external users, File Secure comes with an LDAP-based identity management module as part of the platform. So it just comes right in uh, with what we ship. Or we can integrate, so we have a pretty robust API um, set, and we can integrate with an identity broker like a Ping or an Okta. 
now, once you set the parameters around the who, then we turn to the what or action awareness. So what can the authenticated user do with the file? We as document owners, right, have the flexibility to provide very granular actions here. You might want the, the recipient of the document to be able to only view the document in, in read-only mode or provide them the rights to edit the document. Maybe, you know, you want to provide them rights to print the document or run macros on the document or maybe take screen captures. But maybe you want to prevent them from printing the document or prevent them from running the macros or prevent them from taking screen captures. You control this action as a document owner. Very powerful, very powerful. So now let's, let's move on to the when, which is time-based access control. You can regulate when a recipient can access the file. And for how long? You can embed stuff like um, automatic file expiration time. You can provide them with a four-day window, um, for instance, to interact with a document, or else it will expire. You can dictate the time in which they can interact with the file from the first time they access it. So, for example, um, you know, they access it uh, at you know, 12, and you might give them a four-hour window, and at 4 o'clock uh, the, the document expires if they hadn't uh, finished their work, right? Um, and finally, to the where, uh, location-based access controls mean file secure allows the document owner to drive specific usage um, to specific actions on specific devices, uh, like only allowing the document to be used on the first device uh, the recipient accesses it on, or allow them to access it on three devices if they own three devices. Or we can lock the document down to a specific IP address or a range of IP addresses or a geolocation. So very flexible um, feature, very flexible. So let's look at how File Secure uh, works. File Secure is built on the philosophy that information security should be as easy and seamless as possible both from you know, an IT perspective as well as a business unit perspective. So we've made the act of securing knowledge so seamless you don't even know it's there. Um, in this example, you see a document owner working with an Excel document. Uh, perhaps the document you know, contains social security numbers or credit card information, something sensitive. And the document owner selects an authorized user, sets file permissions, then file secure quickly encrypts the source file and embeds those file permissions for each authorized recipient. Uh, permissions at this point can be set manually by the file owner or automatically, um, uh, depending on whether it's uh, you know, perhaps a predefined enterprise policy. Uh, so you can adhere to that enterprise policy that's been set. Uh, the file encryption key and permissions are automatically transmitted to the file secure policy server for secure storage and lock, uh, logging, right? So um, these keys are in, they do not travel with the document. They go, to, um, they go to the file secure server. So once file secure has encrypted the file, the file owner can readily share the protected file directly uh, with the intended recipient via, you know, these communication channels or others, right? And the communication channels can be trusted or untrusted, private, public, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, in this example, file sharing, corporate networks, internet, it, you know, e either way, um, any content application or collaboration application you can, you can use. So when the user receives the file, they authenticate and try to open it. File Secure checks the, uh, the secure policy server to verify the permissions and then securely imports the required file encryption key. So File Secure then decrypts the file and enforces the preset permissions. If an unauthorized recipient tries to open the file, File Secure will deny access to the file and it'll log um, this illicit attempt and it will be captured in, in the, uh, the audit log. Uh, so the document owner uh, can now also dynamically modify uh, the recipient's um, permissions on demand and can do, do, uh, do so directly or by um, uh, you know, authorizing the recipient to do it. Um, 
Now let's move on to the next, next slide here. Uh, how do we do this with IBM? So let's look at an integrated solution we have with the IBM ECM system. So as a file is downloaded, a security blanket is applied around the content. So this security then adheres to the document and stays with it wherever it travels. So we have this pre-built connector, as Ian talked about, um, for the IBM ECM system through um, IBM Content Navigator. And um, leveraging that, the automation is vital. Um, it's a vital advantage in this environment. So file secure is optimized um, within the IBM Navigator environment environment, meaning we actually automatically attach usage policies and permissions on download and inherit access permissions already defined within the IBM ECM system. This totally enables, um, is enabled through our policy federation framework. Uh, what it means to the user is that the information is secure even after it's taken out of the IBM file net system and distributed it within or outside of the organization. So in addition, it, it, it reduces overhead on duplicated access permissions in the file secure system. And this enables document controls to be applied to the content itself without any constraint on the computer, the network, uh, the storage, or the transmission technology used. And the best part, um, the user experience of extracting and downloading data remains exactly the same as before. So let's look at um, some file formats, right? So we support an unprecedented breadth of file-based formats. So um, 64, I believe, is, is at last count. Um, 60 plus for sure. So due, um, due to this broad coverage, uh, the, the recipients of protected files can now easily open and utilize the file in its standard format. Um, using the native apps, uh, they already understand, right? So um, if they have Office, they can use Office. If they, have, you know, they have Adobe, they can use Adobe. So that's very powerful because we don't, there's no need to switch, right, to some proprietary format and proprietary tool. So um, they remain in complete control of the file security and usage. And the more file types you can protect, the lesser your security risks, right, because they're known. Now let's look at the, um, the recipient, right, the recipient. Um, one of the big challenges with information rights management is, is making it easy for, for recipients to access these documents. So you can imagine, and I'm sure you have shared documents, right, um, with external parties. So imagine you're sharing, you know, very sensitive information with an investment banker during a merger or a prospect um, for receiving a proposal. You want to protect the sensitive document without hindering the ability to access it. So Seclure, at Seclure we provide and pro, we provide file secure um, and these solutions uh, to basically make the end user experience and the usability um, the least disruptive as possible. So we offer three flavors of content interaction. In addition to our standard client module, which offers our full arsenal capabilities, um, File Secure also offers a light version for iOS, Android, and Windows devices. So the light version enables recipients to access and view protected documents on demand through a lightweight application. And what is less disruptive for users um, than using kind of what we call an agentless access, right, point. Um, with File Secure, you can leverage your browser, which is the agentless client, right, um, with zero footprint. We call it File Secure Web Connect. So Web Connect further ensures your ability to readily share protected documents without impeding collaboration at all. You actually just drag and drop the document into a browser and it's fully secure. The next slide, this one is, you know, for the compliance officers in the house, right? Now your organization has protected a file and shared it with um, internal as well as external users. Great. It doesn't end there. In fact, this is a, this is a great ROI. Um, files protected with Secure File Secure contain a transmitter 
basically it transmits all of its actions back, all of the usage back to, um, to a report. So file usage is monitored and it's cataloged in real time. So reports, you can, you can run reports and download reports and output um, you know, analysis according to your requirements. They can be used to facilitate internal audits and compliance with whatever regulatory frameworks are in place within your organization. So ready access to consolidated data about uh, things like um, who viewed the file, what they did with the file, what device was used to access the file, and when. You know, it, it completely makes it easy to address regulatory compliance and audit reporting requirements. In addition, um, we've seen customers feed this information to analytics engines for things like uh, forensic analysis or predictive patterns associated with it, right? So very powerful around um, the compliance aspect. So let's look at uh, a few customer examples um, with, with IBM. Um, the challenge with one of the largest banks in Europe was trying to protect information that moved across business units and beyond the perimeter. So this bank is one of the largest users of the IBM FileNet anywhere in the world, and they had a challenge on their hands. Um, basically, they had many external agencies who needed to access the IBM FileNet system to do their jobs. Agencies like um, their mutual fund organization, life insurance um, organizations, you know, their general insurance organization, consumer branches, um, brokerage service businesses, etc. And, and an abundance of this confidential information resided within the FileNet system. And the only way they could gain access to it, they, they would have to actually, the document owners would have to to we come into the main headquarters and access their documents. So the bank laid file secure over the top of the IBM ECM system, created this secure exchange portal with a view into the FileNet instance, and on download, secured files using file secure. So this was um, a large scale implementation. Every employee, whether internal or virtual, is licensed for file secure. So our system has massive scalability as well in this example. Um, the second, healthcare provider, right? So healthcare providers, sponsors, clinical research organizations needs to need tools to securely and effectively communicate with their trial sites. Um, and, and they're looking for faster, um, higher quality trials, right? The, the sooner you um, dismiss a drug, the less money you're spending in developing that drug. That's kind of the name of the game there. So in this particular um, healthcare provider, they were looking to leverage the exchange of critical documents as a player in a clinical trial while obtaining regulatory standards, right? So the information that they had um, was completely littered with confidential patient information, and it was contained within the IBM ECM system. So they wanted to enable collaboration uh, between multiple uh, external agencies that could serve as a platform for medical advancements. Um, they wanted to automate the distribution and collection of regulatory documents and the, and the patient information and contracts and track their progress. Also, they were looking to enable remote monitoring of regulatory folders and source documents. So they, they put IBM um, FileNet ECM together with File Secure, and uh, this solution provided a single entry point for all of uh, the external entities, ensuring trusted information gets to the right person, to the right place at the right time, in the format they wanted, and based on their relationship with this healthcare provider, all while being tracked and logged throughout the information lifecycle. So they solve the regulatory compliance as well as well, and and while securing um, this information for external collaboration. And then one more is, is a government uh, defense agency example. And, and what they were doing uh, was sharing design specifications with their subcontractors and fabricators, as well as between their own agencies in the government. So they needed to restrict access to documents by user clearance as well. So let, let me explain that. Um, for instance, 
they wanted to make sure people with uh, like top secret clearance could only see a specific document classification. And others who have maybe confidential level clearance have access to a completely different set of document classifications and, and so on and so forth. All of this confidential and, and sensitive info was housed in an IBM FileNet um, system. And File Secure was integrated with the IBM system for this uh, defense agency, which added automated rights management. So upon download, it restricted printing, copying, and screen capture for those in, in different authorized classification zones. So these actions are being used extensively today across this agency. Um, the powerful combination of IBM and Secure provided access to the data, but it ensures that they cannot misuse it. Great example. So let's look at, um, let's look at our, our integration points today. So <clears throat> the first is we do support um, a connector to IBM uh, FileNet Workplace. Uh, yes, Workplace is out there, and so we have customers asking us to support that, and, and so we do with a connector to Workplace. We are supporting the latest and greatest um, around Content Navigator, um, the 2.0.3, and have um, been with Navigator from 01. So we've, we have a lot of best practices here. In addition, we have an integration uh, to IBM Case Manager. We're also looking at continued innovation um, with uh, Content Navigator, going deeper and deeper within the, within the framework. So um, we'll see a lot of that um, come out during the year. We're also looking at integrations with Aspera. Uh, that seems to be a great combination um, around their file uh, and encryption um, transportation solution. And then we're also talking to IBM Connections as well uh, in, in, in respect to you know, how we would uh, integrate those two products. So we have a lot of, um, a lot of heritage uh, with, with IBM and, uh, and, and we're vesting quite a bit in the relationship and, uh, and we're excited about that as well. Now, this, this is a great slide because this is about, um, you know, quantifying the risk associated with different documents. So it's a question for you all. So what is the cost to your organization of losing critical information, either by accident or, you know, by malicious intent? And, and can you quantify that? Um, in a 2012, IB, you know, they came, IBM came out with, with a study. It was called the IBM Global reputational risk and IT study. And they found that 61% of organizations said that, the, that data theft and cyber crime were their greatest threats. And then they did a follow-up study during the first quarter of 2014 and published a report called IBM X-Force Threat Intelligence Quarterly Report. And in that report, they reported that in 2013, there were 500 million plus records breached through various channels like, you know, an, an SQL injection, sphere phishing, uh, third party access, etc. And in that study, it was also documented that the vast majority of these 500 million plus breaches were undisclosed. The result, all told, was an estimated average cost of $3.5 million per organization. Now let me give you a tangible example from one of our manufacturing customers um, in the Midwest. So by accident, an individual working for this manufacturer shared information. They shared the Home Depot price list with Lowe's. So this was accidental through email, and this act ended up costing the customer, our customer, $500,000 just in the first year. And in the resulting year, they had to renegotiate contracts with Lowe's. But not only that, they had to go to their downstream suppliers and renegotiate those contracts as well, which, as you know, ate up margins right per component um, at a significant pack, uh, cap, CapEx hit. Pretty hefty price to pay for an unintentional mistake. So again, I ask the critical question, what is the cost to your organization, right? Is it worth the risk? 
Now, just a little bit about Seclure um, as a company. So we have about 400 customers globally um, with roughly uh, a little over 4 million end users. We're about a 150 person company. <clears throat> We've protected over 250 million files and growing. Um, you can see uh, 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 at the bottom of this chart a, a, a roster of enterprise type customers. Um, the MetLife's and the RR Donnelly's, Panasonic, AstraZeneca, Comcast. We are a enterprise software company. And these are the types of customers that, uh, that we support today and have. So thank you very much. I wanted to thank Ian um, from I Ian Story from IBM for joining me today. Uh, we're, pers we're persuaded that uh, combining the two most powerful solutions in the industry, the IBM Enterprise Content Management um, Platform and IBM Content Navigator, along with uh, Secure's File Secure Platform, um, you can be secure <laughs> that your highly valuable and sensitive content will be managed, secured, and monitored through its complete life cycle, whether it resides in the IBM system or whether it needs to be exposed to the outside world for external collaboration. Um, again, if you have any questions, put them in the chat uh, meeting there and we'll respond to them as, uh, as, a pro as quickly as we can. And I hope, um, I thank you for joining us today and I really hope that this webcast uh, for securing external collaboration was of great value to you. Thank you.